Alright guys and girls, I'm Obsidian Ant and welcome back to Elite Dangerous on the PlayStation 4. So where we previously left off, we were looking at some community goals and I've since participated in a number of them. I think you probably would have done too. Now one thing I forgot to mention that was actually pointed out in the comments was the tier unlocks. Over on the right side of this screen here, you can see the tier unlocks. We're currently halfway through tier 7, getting very close to tier 8. It's likely, I suspect, that uh, tier 8 will be hit within the next 24 hours on this particular one. This is the Acellus Primus. So, just to give you an example, the Erevert one here is currently unlocking tier 4. So that's quite a way behind. There's more people uh, using or playing with the Acellus Primus community gold. And we can see there there's 4,316 contributors with a total global progress of 3.3 billion credits earned. So let's compare that to the Acellus Primus one. On here there's 9.2 or 9,200 uh, contributors with 22.7 billion credits earned towards the goal. So what effect this has is that it unlocks further tiers. Let's go back to the Erevert one here. So tier 4 has been unlocked and let's have a look at the rewards. We start at 400,000 credits at the top 100%. And that goes up to 2 million on the top 75%, 50% gives 4 million and so on, all the way up to 8.8 .8 million. Now, we got a good opportunity here because both community goals are a good comparison towards each other. Every community goal doesn't always have the same rewards, they can change from community goal to community goal. But in this particular case, they're both the same, the Errorfoot one and the Acellus Primus one. And what we can see is that as players have unlocked further tiers, what's happened is that the rewards have increased. And now they start at 700,000, with the top 75% getting 5.9 million. And right at the top, we get in 25.8 million. I'm in the top 50% here. I've made, what have I made? 2.1 million credits earned in bounty in the Celis Primus. So not a huge amount, but enough to get me into the top 50%. And when the community goal comes to an end, that will earn me 11.9 million credits as a, as a reward for uh, completing or working within, contributing in this community goal. So that's just something I wanted to point out that I forgot to mention uh, previously. Now what we're going to look at today is a brief look at the engineers here. So we go over to our right tab on status. We can use a D-pad up and down. Oh, we go all the way down now. There we've got Hollow Me, which is your avatar creation, and we've got Engineers. Now this will only be available if you've got the Horizons version of Elite Dangerous. If you've just got the base version, then you won't have access to Engineers, unfortunately. So what do Engineers do? Well, Engineers craft uh, or enhancements for us. They allow us to enhance our modules, our weapons, and other such things. Todd the Blaster McQuinn, you can see over on the right, his specialization is multi cannons and fragmentation cannons. And now to unlock these engineers, well, there's two steps to unlocking an engineer. First, you've got to be invited, like here, we've been invited to uh, Liz Rider, or we're aware that that engineer exists. And we're also aware of Felicity Farseer, Elvira Murtock, and the Dweller. Now, each of these have different requirements, or they offer different types of specialization, and they'll have different unlock requirements. So we can see the unlock requirement here from Todd the Blaster and what we've got to do is hand in 100,000 credits worth of uh, bounties. And once we do that we can then fly to his base, we can hand those uh, bounties into him and we'll get access to his upgrades. The same is true for Liz Ryder here and Felicity Farseer and these all have uh, different unlock requirements. Felicity Farseer here has an unlock requirement of a scout in the exploration rank and over here we can see that my current exploration rank is aimless so I haven't done any exploration at all currently but we need to get that up to scout which is a few steps up so it will take a little bit of unlocking Elvira Murtuck she wants us to travel a total of 300 light years from our start position now that's much easier in a way perhaps than unlocking Felicity but it's still quite a distance especially if you're in a small ship so these are not the only engineers available, we've got five here, but in total there are 20 engineers and the other ones all specialise in different things as well. 
but you can't meet them until you've unlocked these ones. So, for example, if we go and unlock uh, Todd McQuinn here, uh, give him the necessary bounty vouchers, and then we'll find he's got a number of different um, grades that we can unlock for engineered modules, and these range from grade 1, which is the lowest, right up to grade 5. Now, once we get to, uh, I believe, grade 3 to 4, with Dod Todd McQuinn here, we're getting an invite from another engineer, Celine Jean, and she specializes in hull reinforcement packages as well as armor. So essentially, if you want to fully engineer your ship, it's going to take a lot of work, a lot of time, and a lot of unlocking. So for this reason, many players simply go for the specific modules that they want to unlock, at least initially. For me, that was Felicity Farseer or Elvira Murtock, because I wanted to upgrade my uh, FSD drive to allow me to jump at a heightened distance. Some people prefer to unlock weapons. Todd McQuinn here, you can get better weapons. Other engineers will give you, like here, Elvira Murtock can give you improved shields. So it really depends what you want to unlock to start with. The Dweller with pulse lasers is perhaps a good option for some people. For him, you've got to discover some black markets, five in total. Uh, black markets, you can see on your station's contact menu, and that's only if there's a black market available there. Let's have a quick look. And here you can see there is a black market here. And we'd need to find something to sell on this market in order to uh, in order to have that count towards unlocking the dweller. So you'd need to sell something illegal. Usually that would count as illegal salvage. What we're going to do then is attempt to unlock Todd the Blaster McQuinn right now. And he is in his own system. We can find that by going back to the engineer's menu and view him on the galaxy map. And this will show us roughly how far away he is from us. Well, we can actually see his home system's 76 light years away. It showed us that on the top right of his screen. Now, I'm in my Viper, so I can't plot a course to there because the jump range is far too low. So we're going to need a ship with a greater jump range, which means I'm going to swap out to my uh, Cobra. The Cobra's been upgraded a fair bit and it should have a jump range of around 20 or so light years. So it should be able to get to his system fairly quickly. So here we are then in the Wolf 397 system, which is where Todd McQuinn lives. And well, we're gonna do a little bit of combat here to earn the bounty vouchers. Now my Cobra isn't equipped for combat. Could probably do it with it, but I'd prefer to do it in my Viper. So we're gonna call the Viper over here. That means we've got to use the uh, ship transfers facility. So if you've never seen that before, you can access that through the shipyard menu. Most stations do have them, especially the larger ones. Although not all stations do have shipyards, of course. So we can see here, we've got a shipyard. There's ships for us to purchase. And if we use the uh, R1 button, we can go across to our stored ships. We've got no ships stored here. And then we can go across to ship transfer. And we've got the Viper Mark III there. And it's going to cost us 9,000 credits to ship it over. And it's going to take 17 minutes. So we're going to transfer that right now. And to get a little warning here saying that once that's begun, we can't undo it. Here we are then, 17 minutes later, and our ship has now arrived. You can see it's disappeared from the ship transfer list and moved to the stored ships list. So we're going to go jump into this and we're going to go out and do a bit of combat. Now, don't quote me on this, but I'm not entirely sure what type of range uh, Todd McQuinn accepts his bounty vouchers from. So with that in mind, I'm just going to do some bounty hunting in this system. But it could be possible that you could bring them from anywhere and he will also accept them. So what have we got out here? I'm going to look for a resource extraction site, as we've done bounty hunting in those previously. And we're going to go and do a little bit of shooting, and we will head right over to Todd McQuinn's base. Right, there's no resource extraction site here in uh, Wolf 397, unfortunately. So what we're going to do instead then is check out the local nav beacon. Right, so you'll probably remember that most populated systems have a nav beacon within them. These are the points that all NPCs arrive in when they first jump into a system. So they're a good place for bounty hunting, because more often than not, pirates will also jump in here. Sometimes they'll jump in and leave, but other times they're jumping in here to look for opportunities. Remember, when you select a ship, just wait for the scan to complete so you know whether it's clean or whether it's wanted. Once you're in here, hopefully you won't need too much time here, 
Some of the ships just have a relatively low payout, but keep on at them and keep waiting around, you'll get more and more, and if you're lucky, you'll get one big ship with a nice fat bounty on it as well. There we go then, a one very short stint in the local nav beacon here, and we're already over 100,000 credits, thanks to the very large bounty on the python here. So we've now got enough credits to hand in to uh, Todd the Blaster McQuinn, and uh, let's have a look. Yep, we got nearly 30,000 credits in the Wolf 397 uh, Independence, and over 90,000 credits in the Alliance. So that should be more than enough to get us what we need to do. The next thing we will do is head off to the planetary base for the engineer and hand in what we need to hand in in order to unlock him. But first, have a look at this. It's also worth seeing what the local materials have been dropped in the area, because some of these will be materials you're going to need for the engineers. And I'm going to pick a few of these up. Precipitated alloys. Uh, what else have we got? High density composites. Some of these will be more rare than others. Some of them will be uh, more common, much more common. So let's have a look. If you haven't picked up anything before, you simply select it on your contact panel or select it in front of you. That one's quite a distance away, 4.6 kilometers. So let's boost a bit just to get in range. Be careful we don't go too fast though because you will overshoot it and if it's a canister you will completely destroy it. So once we're quite close we can press the circle and up on the d-pad and that will open up the cargo bay and you can see now we've got a new hologram, a new HUD element on the left there of the radar and what we got is the item that's targeted in the middle layer and we need to keep that under the crosshairs and slowly move towards it. We need to keep our speed below 40 meters a second otherwise we'll either destroy it or miss it and there you can see we've captured the precipitated alloys and all of these materials will go into the materials list that you can see on the uh, right panel here you've got your ship cargo you can go down on the d-pad left on the, or right on the d-pad there and you can see all the materials that we've actually got we've got a little bit of mechanical scrap there which is going to come in handy in just a moment so now we've got our bounty vouchers we need to head towards uh, Todd McQuinn's base and you can there's two ways of finding this you can navigate to it on the system menu this is the long way round but I just do it this way so you can see exactly where it is get an orientation of where things are situated within the system here and we can see we've got a planet here and if we use the stick we can come round to trophy camp where Todd is actually situated so let's come back out of that and you can see the little compass showing us what way we've got ahead. We're going to go there and land at his base right now. So as we approach the planet or the moon and where the base is situated on, we actually need to navigate round to the correct approach line. Now the trophy camp is on the current side of the planet, it's not on the far side. <coughs> Excuse me. If it was on the far side, then it would be... Uh, checkered like that object is there channel progress it's actually dashed out which means the objects behind the planet or the not in this case trophy camp is straight at us now we don't want to head directly down at it we want to come at an angle of it around about 45 to 55 degrees is a good angle so let's aim a little downwards here of the location and you can see there that unidentified signal source is actually dashed which means it's behind the current object that's in front of us so now we can bring our orientation around a bit. We're going into super cruise, orbital cruise rather, and we come in at a nice gentle approach there. I try and aim to come out of super cruise at a distance of around 100 kilometers because the uh, glide function should then take us well within range of the camp. So we need to come up a little bit higher there. Any moment now, I'm going to start pointing down. Once the distance is around about 100 kilometers. We can then point it down and we find that we'll drop out of supercruise between 60 and 30 kilometers of altitude and we're just coming up to the drop location now you can see that on the right hand side of the hut there a trophy camp is making an appearance already it's quite a large base so we can see it at a fairly large distance again as i mentioned in the previous video don't worry about being in glide mode here it won't crash you into the ground it will always bring you out of glide glide rather unless uh... 
So as with every other base, we've got to uh, request docking permission and we can do that once we're within 7.5 kilometers. Now one thing that's fairly unique about the engineers is that if you haven't got an invite to these bases, their defences will open fire as soon as you come within range. Regardless of whether or not you actually ask for docking permission, they simply don't like you being here and they will open fire on you and destroy you. So make sure you've got an invite to any an engineer before you uh, turn up. The bases are also very nice. They've got the uh, custom-made markups here, custom-made layouts. Now one thing we don't want to do is crash because we then lose our bounties and that's one thing we don't want at this point. You can always make a bit of a hash of the landing as I'm doing here. It happens from time to time. We mess up a bit on the approach but it's always fixable so and that's even after all these hours of playing the game. And we are down. Right, so the one thing that's different about the engineer's base is they'll have an option that's not available anywhere else. And that's the engineers themselves. And we see that as soon as we get here. We've got engineer's workshop. There's no shipyard to engineer's base. Instead, we have the engineer's workshop. So let's have a look here now. Now also, just to keep in mind, you don't want to hand, not that you'll be able to, hand your uh, bounty vouchers over here in the contact menu where you normally can. What we do instead is hand them in through the engineer. There'll be an option there where we can actually donate. So we can donate everything we've got. We can donate 100,000 credits. We've got just over that. And there we go. We are now unlocked with Todd McQuinn. So over there we can see on the left hand side of the engineer menu it says specializations. We can modify our multi cannons. We can also... I've actually quit out there. I'm getting a little bit of lag. Let's go back into the menu there. We can actually tab across using the shoulder buttons and have a look at all the other modules he's got available. He can modify cannons, multi cannons, fragment cannons, round guns. Now, not all engineers can modify all the way up to grade 5. Sometimes you'll need to go and find another engineer who is much more specialised at a particular uh, module or weapon. In this case, uh, Todd McQuinn can only modify cannons up to grade 2. And fragmentation cannons, fragment cannons, he can only modify up to grade 3. But he really does specialise in multi-cannons as well as rail guns. So let's have a look then at multi-cannons. Let's see what he can do here. I need to know which class you want to review. So, well, what class of weapon do we have? Let's look at modules. We're looking at multi cannons, and we can see there we've got 1G. So that means they're class 1. So we want to review the class 1 modifications. So then, here are all the modifications we can make. We've got efficient weapon. It's red because we can't actually use it. We need some sulfur. Over on the right, you can see the material cost. It says micro resources, sulfur, cost one, one unit of sulfur. And unfortunately, we don't have any in our uh, materials list here. Now, there's two types of materials. We've got regular materials. These are picked up from destroyed ships, as you saw me just now get some uh, precipitated alloys. And the grade over on the right hand side of the screen indicates how rare they are. Crystal shards, for example, are very common. Chemical processors are pretty common as well. And then we have ones with five little pips in. Have we got any with five pips? No, we haven't. We've got ones with four though. And these are pretty rare, with five pips being the absolute rarest. Now, in addition to regular materials, we also have data. And sometimes the engineers will ask for these. So we've got aberrant shield pattern analysis here. That's got four pips. Now you'd expect that to be pretty rare, but I've got 39 of these already, so it's not as rare as the system's trying to tell us. But we get these from scanning ships or scanning other objects. So simply select those ships or objects. Sometimes they can just be satellites or anything else. And there's a chance that when your ship's scanned, the object you've got selected, it will give you a bit of data. So here you can see one of the five pip objects I was on about. These are the rarest, 
have normal compact emissions data in this case. And we've got quite a few here. Now the downside about the way this system works is that there's a capacity limit. You can see down the bottom the capacity limit for data is 500 units and the capacity limit for data is 1000 units. Now this fills up very very fast so more often than not you'll find yourself throwing stuff away that you may feel you need later on. But currently that's the way it works. There's no other way around it. Some objects like sulfur these are collected as it says there, collected on those planet's surfaces from and from asteroids. So you can use a mining laser in asteroids to shoot chunks off an asteroid and hopefully, if you're lucky, a little bit of sulfur will drop. Alternatively, you can drive around on the planetary surface with your SRV and locate rocks to shoot them and just maybe you'll get a bit of sulfur that way. Now that's something we'll have a look at in the next video. For now we're just going to concentrate on the materials we've actually got. So what do these modifications do? Well, here, efficient weapon, what that does is reduce the thermal load, so when you're firing the weapon, it will cause less heat buildup inside your ship. In fact, 31% to 40% reduction. And as we go up the tiers, up the grades, you can see grade 2 gives us a 36 to 45% improvement. So it also gives us an additional stat there, which is less from the power draw. But at the same time, it has higher... Uh, cost requirements. You can see it requires some heat dispersion plates as well. We go up to grade 3 and you can see the stats increasing but the cost also increases. Grade 4 and grade 5 which is the best but also the most expensive using some of the more rarer and even the rarest materials. Now the way you unlock these grades and we'll have a look at that in just a moment. If I actually pop back here you can see the unlock progress there. The unlock progress is at 0% on grade 1 and the way it gets unlocked is by purchasing uh, upgrades here. Each time we make a purchase, it will unlock our progress towards the next upgrade. So here we've got a high capacity magazine. That will allow us to have increased ammo clip. You can see there, we've got a chance of a 10% to 61% increase in clip size. But sometimes some modifications have a negative impact. In this case, we have a negative impact on the uh, mass a negative impact on the reload time as well as on the power draw. What else have we got? We got lightweight mount which reduces our ship's mass. That's pretty good if you want to be able to increase your jump range. We're not worried about that in our combat focused ship here. We got a long range weapon which increases our maximum range by 10 to 20 percent at grade one but it also increases the mass of the weapon as well. The mass is its weight. The heavier your ship is the harder it is to maneuver and the harder it is to have a high jump range, you'll actually decrease your jump range. But you can see, again, on the high grades here, you have a worse trade-off. So although our maximum range would go up to 29% to 61% here, we can have a power draw reduction. What else have we got? We've got an overcharged weapon, which gives us an increased damage output, but it reduces, increases rather, the power draw of the weapon and we got a rapid fire modification but that increases the jitter so these ones that are orange I can actually purchase I'm gonna make an upgrade on one of these now so we can either do a rapid fire modification or uh, we can do an increased clip size modification so in two minds as to what one to go for normally I'd probably go for an overcharged weapon but in this case I don't have the cost for that and I want to show you how to get the other materials a little later on material collection is a pretty long process so not something I'm going to be able to do right now what we're going to do is go for the increased uh, fire modification because that's going to allow us to increase our damage output so once you've chosen your uh, modification we can just select that we should be able to. Actually, if you've done what I've done there, you, you would have gone into the wrong menu. So back out again, come to specializations and select the actual module or weapon that you want to modify. In this case, one of the multi cannons, these ones are gimbaled. So it will now allow me to choose a, a preview outcome of the uh, module I've got selected here. So yeah, I'm going to go with the uh, rapid fire modification. I think that's going to be best just for early purposes here. Right, now we can preview the outcome. Now this is the side of the engineers that many people quite dislike. A lot of people find some enjoyment out of this as well. 
For me, it's not the best option because it's all a very, very much random. Essentially, you've got some sliders here and they will jump back and forward and stop like a casino machine, giving us our modification. So let's have a look. We can view cost and generate. Now, we only got one option, one chance of this, unfortunately. Let's just pop back because on the uh, rapid fire modification there, we've only got one piece of mechanical scrap. Now, if we had more of that, we could make many attempts on this and choose the one that we actually prefer. Every time we make a, an additional roll or an additional attempt, we'd have to discard the previous one. But like I say, we've only got one option here, so let's hope for the best. And that's what's telling us now. Generating this modification will cost resources, regardless of whether or not you choose to accept the result. So let's generate. And again, this is only going to modify one of the weapons. We've actually got two. So that's more towards the higher end there. It's actually pretty good. But also, we've got some pretty hefty... And we're very, very lucky here. We've got a experimental effect on the weapon. We've got an incendiary round. Modified ammo systems capable of delivering a superheated rounds, increasing damage and converting a large portion, per, portion to thermal. So that doesn't come up all that often. And you can see up the top on the right, we also got secondary effects. So that was a nice bonus as well. So we're gonna apply this to our weapon. Again, that only gives us a single weapon modification. And if we have a look over here on our fitted modules now, we can see which one has actually been modified. We've got a little uh, icon there towards the right-hand side of that multi-cannon, which tells us it's been modified. So then, that's the engineers, or a very early look at them. And what they're all about is customizing your ship. Get in builds that suit your exact purpose. On my other account, on my PC account, I've got a dedicated exploration vessel, which is an ASP Explorer, and I've built it up to be a very cool running, with a jump range of around about 47 light years. You can also, of course, dedicate a combat build to your ship, and make it very, very powerful and very, very efficient, and you'll be wiping the floor with all NPCs in no time at all with such a ship. And of course, people go for combat builds for PvP as well. So then, if you have access to Horizons, and you want to customise your ship through the engineers, then you may want to check out what sort of modules are available, so you can go and get the exact sort of build you want. Now fortunately, there's a whole bunch of dedicated websites out there. One of them is called Inara, and I'll list that in the video description. There you can see all the blueprints and their material requirements, as well as the engineers themselves, and the unlock requirements for each of those. For now though, that brings us to the end of this video. I'll have a look in more detail at how to collect some material in the next video. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.